Today, a new antibody treatment gets FDA approval just one day after data shows a vaccine candidate to be 90% effective. But we're not out of the coronavirus woods yet. Plus, lots of tech stocks finish in the red for the second day in a row, as investors start looking beyond the COVID pandemic and sell the so-called stay-at-home winners to pick up some beaten down travel names. Millennial traders, though, are doing just the opposite. And finally, after a 20% drop in just one day, Peloton stock gets some much needed love thanks to Beyonce. <laughs> I'm Mackenzie Segalos, and this is CNBC After Hours. It was another mixed day on Wall Street. The Dow powered higher, while the S&P 500 and NASDAQ finished in the red. The NASDAQ composite, which consists of a lot of technology names, was clearly the biggest loser today, just as it was yesterday. But more on that in a minute. A pharmaceutical company Eli Lilly was one of the winners today, closing nearly 3% higher after the FDA granted emergency authorization to its antibody therapy following data showing that it reduced the need for hospitalizations. This comes just one day after Pfizer said the vaccine candidate that it developed with BioNTech was 90% effective. That's incredibly high, much higher than what we expected. Earlier this year, Dr. Fauci said that he'd be happy if a COVID vaccine was 60% effective. Okay, so studies show the vaccine works. Great, can we all go outside now? Well, no, not yet. The FDA hasn't approved the vaccine yet, and there's only limited supply available right now. Also, the vaccine needs to be kept cold, super cold like minus 70 degrees Celsius cold. It needs to be packaged and shipped that way as well. So it's going to take some time. Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar told CNBC this morning that any American who wants a vaccine should be able to get it by April, but other experts estimate that it may take longer into the summer for widespread availability. Dr. Kathleen Neusel runs the Center for Vaccine Development at the University of Maryland School of Medicine, where researchers are helping to conduct phase three clinical trials of another COVID vaccine candidate, this one from biotech company Moderna. We asked her to explain what has to happen between now and broad availability of the vaccine. The Pfizer news of the 90% efficacy is, is terrific. You know, I've worked with respiratory viruses my whole career. We are not used to seeing efficacy that is this high for respiratory virus vaccines. To be starting at such a high efficacy is great news for vaccine development, not only for Pfizer, but for all of the other vaccines that are in development based on a, a similar construct. Now, what does this mean to those of us in the United States? You know, we're not quite there yet. We know that Pfizer hasn't filed with the FDA for emergency use authorization. As they said, they need some, some longer follow-up. We also know that we will be in a supply constrained situation no matter who is first on the market and no matter how many vaccines are first on the market. So we need to continue to be diligent about wearing masks and social distancing, and likely it will be priority groups that will get a vaccine first. We do know that vaccine development is a risky business. It usually takes much, much longer, as people have heard, you know, 15 years, 20 years, and we've condensed that down to 12 months. So everything does have to go very well. You know, manufacturers have to, to scale up. It's easier to make small amounts of vaccine than to make large amounts of vaccine. And then in terms of distribution, people have been talking a lot about the storage of these early vaccines, these mRNA vaccines that require storage in a, a minus 70 to minus 80 degree freezer, which we know isn't really available in most, for example, public health clinics or healthcare provider offices. An additional complication to the rollout strategy is that we will likely need two doses of vaccine. So this, this will be difficult. We have to make sure that, that we track the vaccines, we track when people get the vaccines, and that we bring them back. Now, how much of the population would need to take up a vaccine to get herd immunity or make a difference in the outbreak? 
partly depends on the efficacy of the vaccine. So with a 90% efficacious vaccine, we wouldn't need as many people to to take up that that vaccine in order to start seeing herd immunity. Now we'd obviously like it to be as high as possible, but but perhaps you could get away with 50, 60% of, of the population. The lower that efficacy is, the higher the vaccine coverage must be. Okay, let's get to our sound check. Here's a roundup of the day's biggest action and what the top newsmakers and business leaders had to say on CNBC's airwaves. I think what the Pfizer news just demonstrated is that you can develop a vaccine that is very protective against this, uh, this virus based on the early results, if those results hold up. This needs to get out there because the frontline healthcare workers need access to this vaccine, and so do the high-risk populations very, very soon. Before we have broad vaccination in the elderly, you could really use this to prevent spread. If there's one staff member or resident infected, give this to everyone else in the facility and protect them. We see plant-based as being something that uh, is here to say. Uh, the question of when McDonald's would get into it uh, is the only question. It was never a question of if. I gotta say, guys, this is probably the biggest Apple announcement from a technical perspective since the iPhone went to Apple design chips. Even though there are still supply and distribution challenges between where we are now and a scenario where everyone who wants a COVID vaccine has access to one, investors are already looking ahead to the latter. All we have to do is check out yesterday's monster stock performance, with the Dow up more than 1,600 points at one point and setting its first record high since all the way back in February. After the news broke of Pfizer's 90% effective vaccine, investors rushed to buy stocks that have been hurting throughout the pandemic. Companies with businesses that are particularly hit by people's social distancing and foregoing travel. Things like airlines, cruises, and hotels shot straight up, as did oil prices. At the same time, some of the stocks that have seen the most love over these past seven months did just the opposite. Names like Zoom, Peloton, and e-commerce platform Shopify that were best positioned to succeed under COVID conditions, they saw their shares sink. But one group of traders bucked yesterday's trend, selling the pandemic losers and buying the pandemic winners. That group, millennials. CNBC's Kate Rooney has more. Younger traders have been loading up on airlines and travel stocks during the pandemic, but they're taking some profits and looking to some new sectors this week. Delta and the major airlines, as well as Carnival and Norwegian Cruise Lines, have been among the top 50 most widely held stocks among millennial investors. That's according to Apex Clearing. Trading volume for those travel names was up 900% yesterday compared to your average Monday. But younger traders took that positive vaccine news as time to take some profits. Selling for Apex clients outnumbered buys almost two to one. Millennials have also been long those stay-at-home stocks this year. Zoom, Netflix, Teladoc, and Peloton are all on the millennial top 100 listed Apex and have been massive winners during COVID. But as they got crushed yesterday, trading volume for those names was up 450% versus your average day. But it was mostly buying. People took that dip in prices as a chance to add to their positions, with buys outpacing sales 5 to 1. Another area they're doubling down on this week, vaccine companies. After the Pfizer news yesterday, that was the fourth most active stock among Apex users with strong net buying. SoFi, another millennial-focused trading platform, said it saw more interest in Moderna and Inovio as well. Okay, time for today's numbers round. Let's kick it off with 11. Sales of Beyond Meat's food service category, which includes restaurants, sunk 11% last quarter. The plant-based meat company disclosed this number in its earnings report last night. The decline sent shares tumbling after hours, and the selling continued into today. The stock fell double digits, just one day after a confusing and vague announcement from McDonald's about its new McPlant patty. Beyond Meat says that it co-created the product, but McDonald's won't confirm the collaboration. 
Next, 3.6 million. Fitness bike maker Peloton just struck a deal with the one and only Beyonce to produce exclusive content for its community of 3.6 million members. The company did not reveal any financial terms of the multi-year partnership. The content will consist of streaming themed workout experiences across categories like cycling, boot camps, running, and strength training. Peloton says that Beyonce is the most requested artist among its global community. And finally, 2.1 billion. VF Corp, the retail conglomerate that owns the North Face, Timberland, and Vans, is buying popular streetwear brand Supreme in a deal worth $2.1 billion. VF Corp shares rose 11% yesterday after the announcement. In recent years, Supreme has released several high-profile collaboration collections with the likes of Louis Vuitton, Nike, and Levi's. So maybe a Supreme-branded North Face parka is next. That's it for After Hours, but before we go, here's one more thing to keep an eye on. Target and Ulta struck a deal today to open makeup and skincare shops inside of Target stores around the country starting in the second half of 2021. We snagged interviews with the CEOs of both publicly traded companies, so get all the details on this new strategic partnership by going to CNBC.com and downloading the CNBC app. We'll be back here in our home office every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday with a new edition of After Hours, so be sure to catch us then.